Hi fellow traders. I'm going to recap my trade today and answer a couple questions I've gotten um, in the last day or so. Um, how I decide or how how do I determine my bias? And if you know you've been in the chat room and you see the first of a couple weeks of June, I was always on the wrong side of everything. And, you know, I kind of forgot or what I was supposed to be doing. Um, I had already had in my mind that it's going to slow down. Things are going to just get crazy. And I let it get into my head. And I didn't go back and read my notes as to what I did last year. How did I get out of this funk last summer? Um, what did I learn? And what did, you know did I take from that in order to help me move forward? And one of the things that I usually do is monitor the futures. And that usually gives me this um, the E-mini S&P 500 future. It's what I usually gauge how the market's going to open that next day. It doesn't tell me how it's going to trade so much. But it'll give me an indication of how it's going to open because the market can open strong and then sell off. But in the in the opening stanza, it's going to give me an idea of where which direction I need to have my bias. You know, if the market is looks or appears that it's going to open strong, I'm not going to look to take shorts out of the gate. You know, I'm going to wait, let the dust settle. And then take shorts later on in the day if the market decides to turn. If it continues to go strong, then I'm going to leave it alone. And you can see, um, when I was looking at it last night, before I went to bed about, I'd say, 1 o'clock or so, this is what it looked like. We had a little gap up, and this is, this is what I was looking at. We had a little gap up. We were above the VWAP. And the futures trade 24-7. And this reacts to China, Europe, you know, everybody that's, you know, the market's going to open before we even wake up. This is reacting to it. And this gives me an indication of what the day is going to look like. So when I wake up at 7, I mean, I even wake up sometimes at 4 or 5 in the morning in the bathroom and I kind of look at this just to see what the futures did overnight is there something major gonna happen you know and you can see um, last night when I woke up this morning this was still up it was still strong and it was still trending up making higher lows and I was like man this you know the market's gonna be strong we're gonna get some recovery today so out of the gate I was not looking at anything short um, so the only ticker I saw that gave me, you know, a good long opportunity was this ALV. And we'll look at that in, the, in a minute. But just to give you some idea, let's look at the, um, the daily chart for this. You know, we're going through this Brexit thing. It did shock the market. But look at this. This is... Back in September of last year, this is the China scare. You know, look at what it did. That was killer. Here's a, here's the next China scare here. Now we we had a little bit of sauce in these tacos too, but the thing is, these were worse reactions than this Brexit thing, and I don't understand why everybody was going crazy because this is it was only a referendum. It's not set in stone. There, there's no plan for them to even do anything. So they may look at this thing and start putting a plan together and realize it, it doesn't make sense for us to leave. And then where we're at. So people are starting to realize that, you know, what happened really doesn't, doesn't really mean much right now. It has no, shouldn't have any effect or any bearing on, on what we're doing in the market. So I kind of dismissed it and I just started looking at 
the technicals. Look what you know. What's the charts telling me? You know everything that I use, all the information that I use to tell me how I need to trade the market that day. It's going to be the same. So I didn't react to Brexit and start trying to trade this, that, and the other thing, trading gold and all of that. A lot of people did, you know, and a lot of people made money on it. If they've been through this before and they know about all that, that's fine. But that's not me. So you didn't see me do that. I pretty much stuck to me and just stuck to trying to find the stocks that fit my eye and fit the setups I like and then move on from there. And so, you know, that's what I looked at. And that's why this morning, you know, I didn't have some of the stocks on that you would look to short. Because I knew when the market opened, you weren't going to have any short opportunities on this stuff. It will be later on in the day. Um, so I, I didn't like the levels that the market had, you know, and I just kind of left that alone. So the, the ticker that I looked for, that I had on my watch, uh, let me get the right chart up here. Uh, it was ALV. Now there was some news on there. This is an auto parts stock from overseas. And, you know, I'm an automotive guy. So I was, that's the wrong one. I was somewhat familiar with, you know, the stock. And, you know, I didn't have to worry about doing a whole lot of background on it because I was familiar with it. If I'm not familiar with the stock, I'm going to do a little bit more background on it. But I was familiar with this and I liked the, this wasn't a drastic bounce. This was kind of a nice grind up. And a lot of times when you get a stock that has a nice, you know, grind up, it's going to continue to move up. You know, this thing sold off on the news, but then once people realized that it wasn't bad, that, you know, it started grinding up. So I wasn't looking short. I felt this was going to recover with the market. So that's how I played. Um, the spreads weren't that bad. You know, for a hundred dollar stock, the spreads were pretty good. So I, I felt real confident doing it. Now, the one thing it did do was I thought this was going to run. When I saw this candle, I said, man, this damn stock's going to run. It's not going to give me a pullback. So, and it opened here and it looked strong. So I went ahead and took 100 shares just in case this thing exploded up to the um, 200 moving average. So, you know, 100 shares and I would have gotten a $2 move, that would have been, you know, 200, 200 bucks pretty quick. And then I could play the reset. Well, I put got 100 shares in, it ran up, and then it failed to push this and came back down and tested VWAP. So I wasn't going to dump it. Now, had I lost VWAP, I would have. You know, and I did type in chat exactly what I was looking at. That as long as it doesn't fail, I'm going to keep it. So I got in and it came back and tested VWAP. I didn't lose it. So I went ahead and added to it. And I ended up with a pretty decent average. Now, I actually tried to get in this stock you know, way down here, 104 something on this candle here, but I did, you know, but I missed my entry, just jumped over. It. So I actually tried to get in early, you know, looking at the two minute chart. So I, I forgot to, to mention that, but that would have been an ideal entry. That, I would have loved that. And that would have saved me some of the grief that I had. Not so much grief, but it would have helped me make a little bit more money. So I added here, had a pretty decent average that I could risk on the VWAP now, and I was in full size. Um, so now, you know, with this small account thing I'm doing, 
you know, I, I've pretty much moved all the way over to Sure Trader on these types of stocks. So buying power isn't really an issue with me. I can use, I can get the um, share size that I want to actually work these and, and make some decent money. And so when I got in full, I was able to, you know, knock these two covers out. I covered here because this thing seemed to get stuck at 106 and I, I was thinking that this thing may not push 106 but I was a little bit premature um today for some reason I just didn't have the patience that I really needed to have to let this work I don't know I just felt in a hurry or felt rushed today for some reason um, but I ended up taking some off here and then I took some off here when it pushed this this um this level because 103 was where I really wanted to get in. I mean, really wanted to take my first cover. 106.33 area is where I really wanted to take that first cover, but I didn't. You now I took some early, so I had to split that cover. And whenever I take it early, now I'll just split it. I won't take the full cover early. I'll just split it so that if it does make it, I can take it. If it starts to sell, I can just, you know, cover the rest of it up or sell the rest of it, depending on which way I'm going. So I did get it. It didn't, you know, hold this. It didn't hold a VWAP. So I'm still holding this thing. And don't ask me why because what happened it got down and jumped over my stop the order the price i had my stop and i was like well i'm in small enough i can let it come back and test it you know by this time you know i'm i'm almost about back to break even on this darn trade so i gave it some time i looked at them i glanced at the spy Everything was still strong, so I didn't think it was going to pull back. And so we we got to started getting the push up, and then once it got back over VWAP, you saw I swear I announced that you know added back. So I added back full size here because I was expecting at a minimum to tap this, but I really expected to push this level and make a run up to the 200 at this time. But it got up here again, ended up taking some off here and taking some off here. I split that cover. And so I still had half left. And then I took another quarter uh, right here when it hit the 200. And that was according to my plan. Um, you know, the cover some here and cover some here at the 200. And I was going to be in half for the move up to 108.02. But it kind of slowed down here. You can see these dojis, all this indecision. And it was trading above the upper deviation band from the VWAP. And what this does is this, this usually gives me the range of the stock. And because it was trading above it, and because this was starting to flatline, I went ahead and took it off. Because it started to look weak to me. And I was thinking that this was going to fall back below this and probably start trading back below it. Now, had it come back and bounced off of this 200, I would have added back, you know, for the push up through 10802. Because of the market and everything that was going on, I expected this stock to push up pretty much all day. And I mentioned that, you know, right at the open when I was letting everybody know what stocks I was looking at and what I was looking at from them. And I didn't I had no idea it would get to 109. I thought it would get up here to possibly 108. If it pushed this, it would get to 108 and just kind of tail off. It it got to 109. I hadn't did not think it would make it there. But this was an awesome move and these are the type trades you've seen me take the last couple weeks it's where i get in it and i hold it it's either going to be a 
pretty much an all day fade or it's going to be an all day push up. You know, it's going to run up and just kind of ride the nine on up all day. And that's exactly what this did. So you're going to see me take more of these um, throughout the summer um, where I could just get in, set it and forget it and then concentrate more on, you know, kind of demonstrating how to grow that small account. You know, that's that's my plan. So uh, I hope you understand, you know, what this is. This the setup. It's just a simple either VWAP setup or a five minute open range breakout. And, and I was trading this on the five minute open range breakout, but then it ended up being a VWAP trade on the first one. And then the second one here ended up being a VWAP trade. So it's the same strategies. It's just that I'm adapting them to trading the trend on these stocks that had the potential to trend all day in one direction or the other. And I use how the overall market, I use the futures and how it traded overnight and how it reacted to the world markets as to where my bias is going to be at the open. If it's going to be um, strong, I'm going to look for, I'm going to have these stocks on my watch list that's going to have the potential to trend up all day. If it's weak, then I have the ones that I believe are going to make good shorts and it's probably going to trend down all day. And, you know, that's the, the way it's going to go. Um, I did trade uh, one more ticker. Uh, Mike was in this all day, so I didn't call out, didn't go in I did call out the setup you know what I was looking at um, and I said that if this once this thing lost to 20 I would be interested in it pulling back to the VWAP and so once it lost to 20 here the first time you know I got in at 78 and I was saying that you want to take some profit here at 77 because this thing could get bought back up and it could squeeze so I did take some out uh, I took half off at 77 and just kind of let this thing run and I eventually I got out right here in this um, what was it 70 I got to go back and look at it I got out I think around 76 yeah it was around 76 is when I got out I didn't think this thing was gonna roll anymore um, I didn't expect this move to happen you know I thought that it just didn't have any any legs anymore so I was I wasn't gonna gonna go with it um, but I was only I, I was only in this I wasn't in my full position just because of how this stock traded all day but I figured once it lost the 20 then we would get some safer moves down um, this was just manipulated as far as I was concerned it was just manipulated all day um, this thing should have rolled over here and given you a good bounce at least back to test the VWAP before it moved up this is what most stocks usually do but this one, the nine, and everything was just running out of the gate. And, you know, if you were going to short these, you want to short the, you know, pullbacks and retests. But the market was just so strong, it just really didn't give much. You know, and, and this was just kind of running with the market. And then all through this, you know, I had the chart up. And you can look at time and sales, and all you did was see 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Then you might have seen a 500 thrown in there. A hundred, all you did was see algos working this thing. That's all this was. And then I figured once we finally cracked and got through this, tw this 20 and got away from it, 
then they would be able to let it go and it would come back to VWAP. But, you know, it's just one of those, these stocks that are, are heavily manipulated and traded by a lot of funds. And, you know, you, at least that's my opinion anyway, based on what I saw. I mean, I doubt very seriously if you had a lot of retail traders trading 100 share lots all day. But um, that's my take on that. But that, that was my day. Uh, it was a, a pretty good day. Um, it only took to Wednesday to kind of pick things up. And I did this, this small account video earlier on that one I caught. I'm going to focus on large cap stocks again tomorrow. It's the last day of the month. And then we'll switch over and I'll focus in, in July on kind of showing you guys the strategies and, and the thought process I had, you know, as I, you know, when I started and as I grew that account. So hopefully that'll be, you know, something interesting and helpful to you. So we'll, we'll just continue to see how that goes. Uh, I think I got those video gremlins down now. After two videos, that's not too bad. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow. So everybody have a great evening, great night, and I will see everybody tomorrow in chat.